All right, we're live. Hey, how's everyone going? Here we are again, another week, uh, another step in our cosplay. And uh, we, we have Bake here. With Yo, Delph what's shaking, gang? <laughs> what did you say? I said, what's shaking, gang? <laughs> awesome. Um, so, yeah, tonight we're going to be looking at our patterns that we showed last week and cutting them out a little bit and uh, just chat and Bake's going to share his, what is it called? A CNC machine? Yes, sir. That he uses for his woodwork and he's going to cut his foam out. He normally cuts wood with it, but he's going to yep. try cutting some foam and uh, show us how he does that. And uh, that's kind of a cool trick. I've never used it. Fingers anything. crossed. <laughs> right <laughs> hopefully it works out good and then uh yeah we'll probably switch to a different camera and show our patterns and and cut some patterns out and uh, next week we can start putting them together but um yeah so do you want to show us that machine babe yeah sure say what's up to uh captain comics and mr garrow what's up guys how's it going sorry to keep you waiting garrow Oh so yeah, I'm at my it. I'm at my it's shop right it. now, so that's why I'm on my phone. Uh, see if I can turn this around and get a good shot here. This is my CNC machine. Yeah, and this is my piece of foam that I will be cutting out here. I have a vacuum suction going on. If you look down here, I got four ported. Each section here is ported with vacuum suck downs to help keep the piece, the piece uh, flat. And I have little uh, quadrants that I can turn them on and off. So right now I have all my vacuum force going down to this one quadrant down here. And uh, with that, I've already mapped out the pieces. Uh, I've had to use some micrometers to tell me how thick my material is. And from there, hopefully uh, everything works out just fine and dandy wow that's amazing that's pretty intricate i mean you need that with with when you're doing woodwork yeah and it's basically a step besides a 3d printer you know i know a lot of people are using 3d printers for uh cosplay now to make their pieces helmets and, and accessories so uh this is only two and a half d i can do 2d but the 3d printer is the next progression uh in uh technology nice Very yeah cool. we, we don't have anything technical like that uh we have a sanding machine which we haven't pulled out yet but i'm probably going to do that this that year Tim forgot we had i forgot that we had a sanding machine uh so we got a belt sander too which i might try and use to sand some of the parts but generally got a belt sander right here yeah. Hey, stay puff. Hey, issues. What's up, guys? Yeah, what happened with me is I, I cut my parts <laughs> out by hand with my razor knife, and then uh, I was using this belt sander. Well, this is a 40 grit belt, and that ended up taking out a lot more of the foam than I needed to. So some of my pieces didn't line up correctly uh, or weren't the same size. And since we're de dealing with a mirrored uh, pieces, left and right quadrants, or hemispheres, yeah. uh, it kind of makes a, a big difference if my pieces aren't the same size. Yeah, they really need to be cut. Uh, I mean, when I cut with the with the razor, I uh, I don't do any, when I'm gluing those surfaces together. I don't sand them. I just cut and then glue the two cut surfaces together. Because um, if you do start dremeling or sanding it's going to create like a curved surface or a, an yeah. irregular. And that, next episode, I got a big old glob, a gallon, a five gallon drum of uh, contact cement. So we're ready to go for assembling. And then in case things uh, end up not going as planned, we got some lacquer thinner to help loosen it up. So we're here at the shop and we got everything necessary to make this thing happen. Uh, we're just cracking up at the chat. Issues made a table. Did you see that? I already cycled. Yeah, he was sending me pictures. That was pretty awesome. 
Yeah, I can't wait yeah. to roast some wood. <laughs> <laughs> we have more than that, that, Mr. G. We have a heat gun. We yeah. have. We got super glue. Right. We have a lot of gardening tools. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I got my heat gun. I got my masks. If I, you can see how dusty they, dusty they are, you can tell how often I actually Holy use them. <laughs> That's crazy. But I have I have this giant fan going. I don't know if you can see it back there. And usually our bay door is wide open, so I get a lot of ventilation. So I don't really need to wear those masks unless I'm uh, kicking up a lot of dust or some really harsh, harsh materials. Yeah. Makes so sense. do you use different masks for the particulate stuff and then something for when you're gluing? Yeah, usually if I'm spraying paint or uh, whatever, I'll use these masks with the with the heavy-duty filters. Yeah. And then uh, if not, I'll usually just use, uh, if I'm just cutting or sanding a lot, then I'll come over here uh, and use one of these regular dust masks. But... Due to COVID, yeah. we, we ran out of those because we couldn't get any surgical masks or anything. So we were using the dust masks everywhere we were going. And in the beginning, it's like, hey, no cross-contamination, one, one, one and done, you know? So we would just use it and throw it away, use it and throw it away. Right. But now you come to find out you can actually reuse them a couple times before you end up throwing them away. Yeah. That's pretty cool. Talking about the dust mask, right? Not the surgical masks, or both. Yeah, the dust masks. Those are the ones I would use most of the time. Yeah. Yeah, the other These ones guys. are organic fumes. If you use the right filter, uh, you need those to keep the fumes of the, the glue out and the, the paint. Yeah, last year when I was using a dust mask, though, and I was painting um, the Star Sapphire in the garage, <laughs> It was intense, that spray paint. Like literally, I'm sure I breathed in like at least a full oh, yeah. of that spray paint. Like, because when I took the mask off, the inside of it was completely pink. <laughs> yeah. Oh, definitely. I used to paint houses, uh, you know, before I went back and was sort of working with my family at the cabinets. But I would, there'd be days where I'd get, at the end of the day, shower up and you're just caked up with, with paint paint residue because you're spraying in an enclosed area and if you don't have a mask on your nostrils and your mouth you just got it in there and you're into blowing your nose and like little flakes of white paints coming out yeah and and that paint also had like a metallic uh flex or sheen to it sweet and they Pieces kind of, of lead from china <laughs> right <laughs> billions included Perfect. in the can if they come free but they settled all over the garage and the closer it was to where she sprayed her uh her armor the pinker it was but it was we could kind of uh dust sweep it up yeah yeah it didn't literally stick and paint uh, so i think a few things like the heat gun became a little bit pink and that can't come off yeah. but the other parts gotta of the be careful garage, with the heat gun it was kind of like radiation fallout it just fell on everything and then we swept it up you were asking about glue earlier but what we use is uh i have a spray gun and that's what i actually glue my laminates with i don't know if you can nice. see this table right here this is what i mean by laminate this is a formica on top of a particle board top so right. this is a laminate and the way you usually put that down is by putting contact cement on both sides, let it dry, and put it on. And when I first started watching these videos about the Mandalorian helmets, I realized that's what they were doing. And I'm like, oh, shit, I do that on a daily basis. You know what I mean? I can do this. And then yeah. you started uh, hitting me up in the chats asking about the show. And, hey, one thing led to another, and here we are. Here we are. Yeah, a lot of cosplay. normally have to use a mask for that because it's inside the spray gun, and when it comes out, it's almost like a thick spray, like a like a I don't know glue. It's gummy, you know. So it's yeah. not. But if I'm if I'm painting it or, or brushing it on, then yeah, I need to have a mask because you have the canister open, the fumes out of the can. You know, when I'm spraying it, it's closed off in the can, and it just shoots directly on the material and 
I'm not really inhaling any of it, you know? Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so the, the glue doesn't quite aerosolize like the paint does. No, and it actually makes it so it sticks better than, than brushing it on. Yeah, and it's probably more even too. Yeah. A lot of, a lot of the uh, cosplayers, the good ones, use spray paint. They have their own spray guns. That's something I'd like to get into. We still just use brushes and, and can spray. Uh, but yeah, that's I used to spray a lot thing. for paint. We did the same thing. We got a huge air compressor, so we used to spray a lot of our stuff with paint. I have another gun here you can see. Uh, sorry if I'm not pointing properly with this thing. But, um, yeah, I would paint, but now we moved into a, a new spot, and there's residential parking next door, so... We don't want any overspray uh, getting on someone's brand new Lexus. <laughs> Mr. Garrell, did you get a new, what is that, icon? Logo. Is he, and yes, he free smells, logo? free buzz from uh, the glue, Mr. Garrell. <laughs> <laughs> Why would you want to keep that out? Well, it, it the, the glue that I use on my phone, it's horrible. It has toluene in it, and it kind of burns the back of your throat kind of takes uh layers of skin off or whatever the inside of your throat is oh yeah it's harsh it's bad it's enough that i have to pay an extra uh so much money per pound for uh hazardous uh material <laughs> when i get it shipped here to the shop oh right yeah it's all commercial it's different right yeah it's funny how and i'm buying a whole lot more i'm buying a five gallon drum you know compared to a like court like you guys might get. Right. Cool. But I feel like I'm watching Peter Parker walk I know, around his I, house. I have Peter vibes. <laughs> <laughs> He's on the symbiote crew. He's always walking around his house showing us comics and different Yeah, parts I thought I was going to pull a Biggie Shack. If I turn it like this, I could show the roof and then it's just like Biggie Shack at the comic oh shop. <laughs> <laughs> But uh, yeah, I don't know if you want, man. I can fire this puppy up and yeah, let's do see it. what it does. So uh, real quick, I'll show you kind of a quick process. So uh, what happened was is this was a PDF file that I downloaded and I couldn't get it to come in the right size. So here's the patterns that I downloaded. And since I couldn't get them the right size over in my program that I'm drawing, I threw them on my printer, scanned them up, and then imported them into my program. So uh, real quick, sorry, I'm camera zooming in on my face and stuff. Hair dryer instead of a... So this is my program that I have here, and I got it saved up as my Mandalorian write patterns. Um, is this showing up okay? No? Yep. No, when you put it on the screen, you can see it. Okay. Well, I got, I don't know if this is showing this little piece here. This is for the ear. I'm actually going to yeah. do that out of a, a lower, th uh, smaller thickness foam, a thinner yeah. foam. So I'm going to leave that one out. Now I'm just going to be cutting all these pieces. Uh, I have to tool path them, which when you see it in pink, uh, that's what I do with my tool. It tells it where to go, how deep, what I want it to do it with. Uh, I got rid of all the reference marks and uh, left and right pieces because when I go and you know, control A. I didn't yeah. want it to, to, it highlights everything and I didn't want it to, to do the stuff in the middle because it was a lot of pieces. So these are all my right pieces. So I got them here and while I'm in here, I had to set my thickness or here we go, sorry, width of my materials. You know, it's 22 and three quarters by 22 and three quarters square. It's almost a half inch thick. So that way my machine knows how deep it's going to go and it's not going to start digging into my, uh, my tool bed. So then from here I can pick out how I want to do it. And, uh, I did a profile pass. Uh, it reverted back to the original, but I got two passes going and I got a quarter inch bit and it's going to be cutting on the outside of these. So since the quarter inch bit, if I would have clicked on the inside left, it would be on the inside of these right here and it would affect the sizes of my shapes. So from there, uh, I have to load it out on my computer out here because since it's such a uh, expensive piece of machinery, 
I don't want to uh, have it hooked up to the internet or anything because next thing you know, you get a virus and I can't get a job done for a customer. So <laughs> right now, this is the program that opens it up. Uh, I got to load the file. Wow, and, look at that. Uh, Mando cutouts right. Open. And let's just see where she goes. Whoops, sorry. Feel free to guide me if I'm not pointing in the right direction. So now it just lets me know if all my uh, if all my uh, pins are down, which helped me line up and keep it square. So we hit OK, and she should get going. So get ready. They're also She's coming out all right. Yeah. yeah. Look at that. There it goes. Like a shot like dirty job. Yeah, it's like dirty job. <laughs> well, normally that brush there is a vacuum, but since it's foam, I don't want it to vacuum and suck up the entire piece of foam up inside the. Oh. So oh we didn't mean that was dirty. It... Dirty. We were just saying because there's a heavy piece of machinery, and it's a it's a really cool shot. Yeah. Is it showing off enough or? Yeah, that's pretty neat. That's cool. I see what you mean about you having to sand the edges, though. Because it's a router, it, it, it doesn't seem to be making like a, a sliced cut. It's actually a little smoother, but yeah, it is messed up a little bit. You can see. Yeah, that's really cool, though. Okay, uh, let me see it'll start doing it hold on a minute bring you back over here where the hell's my plug i think this is it right here sorry man <laughs> you're now, fine i'm trying to get him big and us small i guess it's not working <clears throat> excuse me i was plugging it in i thought my my vacuum would kick on but i guess my dad did something when i wasn't in the shop the other day <laughs> but you can see how this is coming up here i don't want it to move but I, if, the, if this vacuum was on over here it would suck it up into the router bit screw it up but that hose if you can <laughs> see it links up to this yeah see goes up to the pvc piping and actually goes all the way over to this dust collection system we have here. Wow. What's PED? Performance enhancing drugs. <laughs> Is that what he's referring to? Yeah, PED is performance enhancing drugs. <laughs> Ah, there we go. Remember those pieces I showed you earlier, Kachu? They look to be coming out nice and nice and clean here. The outside, I could just do a hand sand, but at least that's, it's going to help me keep them all the same size. Yeah. Um, I don't know if you can see right here. It moved a little bit, and there's a little indent here. For oh, where. yeah. But it's not, it's not big. It's not noticeable. That's what you're going to be saying when you put this helmet together. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I think I only have maybe two more pieces left. That's pretty neat. That's awesome. Well, that's definitely cutting them out a lot faster than we'd be able to do it oh, with a knife. Sure. Oh and, yeah, man. And for more. Well, precise. the other thing is, the other thing is, is that tracing. You um, if if I use if I'm not completely using the same point of the marker or the pen, my line could be thicker on one piece than it is on the other. So if I cut it, it might not turn out the same the same size. Right. That's what she said. <laughs> I'll finish up on here since we're almost done over here. What do you usually use that to cut, like typically for clients? Uh, 
Uh, signs, uh, signs, uh, uh, anything really. I mean, if you think about it, cabinets are four pieces of wood. I just cut them to the size I want, and then all I have to do is assemble them. Instead of taking a giant piece of uh, plywood, which you see on this rack over here, these are all full sheets of plywood or MDF, uh, medium density fiberboard, and uh, I would have to carry a four by eight piece of material and sometimes they're very heavy and trying to twist it and move it. I mean, you can see the size of this piece here and imagine, you know, tripling that with the weight and the size. Hey, so, all right, we finished up over here. Then we come to the computer and we just tell her to park. Oh. Sorry. Just tell me if I'm not aiming it in the right spot. <laughs> no, you got it. We can't obviously read it, but we can see the screen. So lift her up, and now she goes back to her home zone. She's good to go. So from there, I just got to walk over this way. Shut off my vacuum suck down. And we're good. And here's uh, now that I shut the vacuum up, you can see that this is all coming up off the, off the table. Uh, here's my pieces and yeah there's a little bit of a some burrs here nothing that a, a hand sanding won't fix mm -hmm. but at least they're uh they're the same size yeah Let's see if it now this uh, these pieces of tape i don't know if, if i'm aimed on it right but you can see from being on the ground at my shop there's tears <laughs> and nicks in it so uh i i had to measure so far over so far up to make sure that none of my pieces were gonna be over top of that. Oh, right. That's the last thing you want. Exactly. So yeah, That's it, it cool. is a mess, especially when you cut material that isn't wood. Like this stuff uh, will be around forever. It's not gonna rot or dissipate like wood. And then especially if I do, I don't know if you, can you see this black and white thing? Mm -hmm. Yeah. That is something called color core. You can see that it's sandwiched white black white and that is like a plastic or a starboard type of material that uh you just engrave into so you don't have to paint it so if i'm making a sign for somebody and they wanted a specific color i order it in the colors they want and then i design the sign and it's everlasting it'll never rot right well that's pretty fascinating it's it's cool because just to see you know what kind of techniques that can be applied to something like cosplay and creating costumes and armor and stuff. Definitely. When you guys get into armor and stuff, if you have some, some pieces you need cut out, feel free to just email me the stuff. And uh, as long as you pay for the material and shipping, I got no problem. I won't charge you any, any labor. Like I charge all these other customers. You're part of the comic community. <laughs> Thanks, fake. Yeah, but just from a, you know a different profession and and using the tools, techniques that you use for that can be applied to other things. So yeah, these are some of the pieces you're talking about. Maybe next week or the following week, uh, have to use the heat gun and start forming them, mm -hmm. so they're yeah. a little bit more pliable. Yeah, I'm and gonna the have hard to... part is is uh, this piece here. I got to cut a, a bevel on there. Let me get out of the light. Uh, a 45 inch bevel on here so it, it'll uh, give you that ch the cheek indentation that's on the mandalorian helmets oh right you know, on boba yep. fett helmet i know you know boba fett you just won that comic there kachoo oh i know <laughs> that was amazing yes sir it was from man cave i got a bunch yep. he, he, that was a pretty cool giveaway I have some so, yeah, pretty decent be, luck when it comes to giveaways. I kind of got John luck. Right. He has right, shares in the random on. He wins I all the time. I have it backwards. So these two pieces are going to make up the cheek of the helmet. Yeah. And if you notice, uh, the Mandalorian helmet has a... Sorry, I'm not trying to flick everybody off. Uh, <laughs> but uh, the cheek of the Mandalorian has an indent that goes in so that's where the bevels come in I mean, everything else seems like it's just going to go together there's only two pieces on each side that need to have this 40 degree bevel yeah so just the 90 degrees and then that you, you'll probably just shape them a little bit before you glue them together that that helps keep that curve going 
Exactly. Now, what I wanted to do is set it up on this machine here, a little saber saw action. But uh, when I try to tilt it to 40, kick it over here, you can see that my blade gets impaired. So I can't actually make the cut. Even if I try to twist this, it doesn't line up. So I'm going to okay. have to freehand that one. Yeah. So no PEDs, Carol. <laughs> <laughs> well, so sorry, well, I'm, I'm not, not trying to hog the whole show, man. So oh, no, I, you're mean, the one no, I think to... that's great. I mean, you know, you're part of the show, so we got to see what you're doing. And you're, <laughs> I want to see yours, though, because I did kind of cheat. The Mandalorian is such a, a famous or popular build that there was these patterns online that I just had to download. You had to make your own patterns, correct? Well, yeah, I mean, I'm re literally using a picture, um, uh, and I may end up modifying it to create more pieces because if you create more pieces and not too many pieces, uh, you can get like a more um, smooth curve. If you have, you know, just two or four pieces, uh, you can end up with, you know, kind of a... A TP uh, or like a more angles. There's more angles to it. More angles. It's it doesn't look as smooth, especially when it, you. I mean, it's, it's actually less angles, but I know what you're saying. It, it, it's it's it doesn't help create that concave or the the roundness of the helmet that you need. It limits it because you're only using certain uh, uh, less connecting points. Right. So the more pieces, it just gets more complicated, and there's more room for error. And there's more seams then. Whereas I, for my Dr. Fate, I'm just going to go with two, with two halves. I'm going to use this picture and just cut You're it out. You're not going to do a centerpiece? What do you mean? Uh, last, uh, I know it was two weeks ago now, but last time we were talking, you were potentially going to, we were talking about possibly putting a middle strip in the middle to make your helmet bigger. Oh, no. So, well, it'll I'm fit, just gonna, so it'll fit around your head more? I think I'm going to just cut this and and uh, kind of experiment. Um, and then what I'm going to do is when I have each piece, uh, I'll probably do that now, uh, transfer it to foam and then next week form it. Or maybe during the week I'll form it uh, with the heat gun and join them together. And so if I can use the heat gun enough and, and really make good curvature out of this one half of a helmet, then then I'll probably end up just sealing it. Then, then there's, there's no seams, really. There's just the seam in the middle. And gotcha. in a lot, of, a lot of the pictures of uh, drawings of Dr. Fate, there's a, a piece of... There's something that goes down the faux the hawk. Well, there's definitely the faux hawk that covers at least half the seam. Uh, maybe down the middle, uh, it's kind of peaky anyway. So even if there is a peak and it's not smooth around, it'll be fine. It'll look okay. You actually just reminded me I have to cut out another piece afterwards that goes up the right up the middle of my helmet and feeds back into like this little vent that I have to make. There's a lot of intricate parts after the main, actually not, there's two ear pieces, a head piece, and a back vent piece. Those are all going to be integral little uh, out, of, out of thinner foam that I have to make. We have some new visitors, Jeff and Mastodon. How you going, guys? Yo, Jeff and Don, what's up, guys? Just missed out the CNC action. <laughs> you know what? I might just, let me... Uh change our camera over can we do that from here here we go yeah so you made all those patterns right with the reference points and everything so the oh, pat goodness. the patterns that delphia has for her skull um she's creating a death mask and what she's going to do is so she got that from a template that was made by Kamui Cosplay. Uh, she's a pretty good cosplayer that that uh, sells 
and has you know lots of different templates available on her website so she found kind of like a generic skull that she can change a little bit and, and like you kind of manipulated it for your doctor fate yeah well so nice I, she's gonna do that from the pattern that was created by you know by someone else uh but then you know modify that to kind of fit her character because she's gonna do death hey Leah. hey man how you doing hey hi you missed um hi Leah. oy bro now we're in arts and crafts yeah now we're doing arts and crafts <laughs> this is uh the non cnc machine this is the human hand machine <laughs> the non peds <laughs> right this is the technique that a lot of cosplayers use uh generally if they don't have a pattern like this they will <laughs> Maybe just I did uh, this too, man. I did it too with the scissors. It took me a while to cut out all three of my pages of patterns. And maybe like cut I out said, that uh, one. This piece. I'm gonna cut out this piece. Cut out that okay. one and then we'll we'll transfer it to foam and we'll show them the process. Cool, cool, cool. That sounds like fun. Go ahead yeah. and go big so we can see you at work. This seems like something that um we go on Twitch, right? Where people just like yeah. watch you doing this. Yep. So people use Twitch a lot to show their progress and some people watch them for hours. I had no I idea how big Twitch was. I, I got on it a little bit when I was playing a little online video game uh, on my iPad. It wasn't even like a big video game uh, as the streamers do now. So I'm trying to tell my friend, dude, there's this thing called Twitch. He's like, yeah, bro, I know about it. <laughs> I thought I discovered something new. I had no idea it was such a big community like YouTube. Twitch is huge. It's, it's like a gamer stream. Yeah, platform. I, I found out about it from um, a friend slash client of mine, and he's a big time gamer. And I had no idea that he was like trying to build his reputation on Twitch because those people like that do it all the time and are really good at it. And heck, even the really bad people, like sometimes people just like watching the bad players and they make money. Oh, really? Oh, yeah. yeah they make money yeah. on there. If you can see on mine real quick, uh, these are the ones that I so – most of these are actually good. But uh, you can see I did the same thing as you. I took the time, cut them all out by hand by scissors, traced every single piece on here with the reference marks, the letters and everything, and then come to find out the most two intricate parts I needed, I ended up sanding too much on my sander, and that's why I decided to try it on the CNC machine. And why not? I think it'll make for good TV too. <laughs> oh, that's thick. Yeah, well, okay. Oh. That's what she said. <laughs> that's too thick. All right. So this is the uh, seven millimeter foam that we have. Which is a bit thinner, so yeah. I think that's a good. I think the other one's just way too thick for the last one. Yeah, and I'll probably use that for my prototype. Maybe later this there you way. Go. Maybe this way though, because that has a bit. Of Are you guys thickness. using the same thickness of foam? What is it like, ten millimeter or something? Or I'm going to use you got the some... formats for my prototype at least. I'm going to probably use the same gray foam for my my helmet. No. Oh, you know what? Before we do this, mm -hmm. this is what I like to do is use a blade. Mm -hmm. And these reference marks, you need to actually draw on the foam so that you have. Yeah, so you cut little slits out of them. So you're, when you're tracing them, it just goes in the notches. So, yeah, when you use, there you go. See, you just kind of cut it out. Yeah. Because uh, I had some problems problem. there because the paper's flimsy and the foam flexes and it, you got to hold the, the paper with two hands almost and trace with your other hand. So, yeah, we have three hands. <laughs> and, you know, the more reference marks you can make, the better. When you come to glue it, that's exactly what these are for is when you 
glue the pieces of foam together, you can line these little marks up. So, uh, when I was watching on these videos, they, they pointed out the fact that if your reference marks, marks don't line up completely, since we're doing it out of foam, you can scrunch it up or stretch it out a little bit too. So, exactly. you, you know, if you, you have a little bit of leeway. Up, the most important thing is having the surface the same height. So it's not like a, you know, one surface is higher than the other when you glue them together. That's the most important thing because then you're going to have to go in there and, uh, you know, fill in that height difference. <laughs> the way I was talking when you started, I thought it was Delphia making the cuts. And I'm like, damn, Delphia's arms are jacked. <laughs> <laughs> they are jacked. Look at, those, look at those ripped arms and biceps. <laughs> <laughs> well, the way you're talking and presenting in the middle, I, I just assumed that you were the one making the cuts, and then all of a sudden I look down and I see uh, yeah, traps. He took over. I took over just to cut. <laughs> he me and then he just started doing. Which I think that you're fine with that, huh? I'm okay with it. That does not look like a fun time. <laughs> 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 All right. It's very time consuming. So, yeah. Jeff so, said he's thinking about doing a cosplay. Oh, that's awesome. You should totally do one. Jeff, what, what are you going to cosplay? Low pan. Talking? I'm going to put my money on low pan. <laughs> <Nah>. <laughs> All right. So, what do you, what am I going to So, do we're going to maxim do? maximize the foam <laughs> and just get as close to the edge as we can. Okay, so the either, blue one, right? either of those will work. I think on the gray, the blue works best. So, Jeff, if you do low pan, I'll be Jack Burton. Big trouble in Little China. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's what he said in the chat. He's doing a low pan. Yeah. You're good. Sorry. You're good. I must have felt bad about saying shit. I think that word's PG these days. Yeah, you should hear the kids on my street, man. They're running down the street yelling all sorts of cuss words. Right. I know. But I always feel bad like on YouTube, especially when, you know what I mean? I don't know. Yeah. No, I know what you mean. Yeah. That's it's why a lot of times I wouldn't be on someone's show because you never know when, once it hits a certain point of time in the evening, the F bomb started to come out. <laughs> it starts to, it starts to get crazy. Although lately everyone just seems to want to get naked. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> on these patterns they'll have, so this is piece a nine and I believe this is the left side. So when we come to do the right side, uh, you'll just flip it over. But you need to make sure that you know um, what other pieces. So the, uh, this A10. Yeah, don't forget to put that LR. Yeah, so when we flip it over, we'll put A9 on this side. Um, and if this is left, we'll, I need to verify if this is left. But if this is left, I'll put an L. Uh, and if it's the, the turn it over on the right side, put an R mm -hmm. and make this a nine. And then this is a 10 pointing to that side. So I'll just put an a 10 like that. Um, and this says join with a one. So I'll mark that down here that that's joins with a one. When we come to doing the other side, we'll need that information. Mm -hmm. Steak sauce. Cool, cool. So, next we cut it. I'm going to pretend I'm putting it in a bakes machine. You're going to use scissors? <laughs> <laughs> you can use scissors, I think. You do the sound effects, cut you, and we'll do the cuts. <laughs> <laughs> I can't wait to watch this on the replay and see how bad my camera angles were. <laughs> This, I think that seven millimeters is probably about the max you want to go using scissors. Mm -hmm. um, it'll work. Uh, oh, you want to use the razor blade? The blade's probably going to do better at making a surface. Oh, sure. That's but fine. I generally use scissors on five or definitely three millimeter foam. Yeah. 
Um, but let's go. Yeah, I think my the floor mats are a ten millimeter. At make least sure that's what they were saying. Yeah. To make sure. So I used my my razor knife. That over. I bet. There you go. That's fine. One of the problems with the razor knife, though, is that it wants to flex if you put too much pressure on it. So then you won't be getting a straight cut. You might actually be beveling uh, edges that don't need to get a bevel on them. That's a good point. Yeah, so you need to be pretty much straight up. Especially with yours, because yours is the ones that break off, right? So yeah. that one, if you get too long, it can uh, get, get flexy. Mm -hmm. Mine I'd is... like to get, you know... A a good razor that I can. I love this thing, man. And I actually got it at uh, a Kmart, uh, Walmart for other people, but yeah, Kmart. And not only does it have the, the stiffer razor blades that the, the construction people use, but it also has a retractable knife in it. Oh, wow. That's handy. You can murder someone two ways. <laughs> exactly. It's like a, no, that's Sorry, cool. everything's backwards, and I'm on my phone. Now, the other thing we need to do before we forget, I'll just do this last cut. Now, I'm going on the inside of this line because that's where the edge of the paper was. Oh, great. Now I got to just like uh, Jack Burton. <laughs> I just saw Jeff's comment. Deal, babe. Uh, it's been a while since I've done this. It's. Now, are you cutting on the inside or the outside of that line? The inside of the line, because that's where the edge of the paper was. If I go on yeah, the outside, that's you kind of. And I know in. if we use a, a sharpie, that the the tip of the sharpie is thicker than it needs to be, really. So. Now, before what I tried to do is that... cut it to the outside of the line to give my helmet a little extra you know, size to it. Right. Where'd that uh, pattern piece go? What piece? That we traced. Um, I think it's underneath. Pull down. Mm. <laughs> it's disappeared. <Level> mom. <laughs> All over it. Quick, someone rewind it and see where Kachung put it. <laughs> Where on earth did they go? I have no clue. We labeled it. I mean, yeah, we definitely labeled it. <laughs> it's not on there. Did it fall that way? Oh, here it is. I see it. It flew. So, remember, we put the labels on the other side but so this is for this direction where's that pen <laughs> we keep losing things <laughs> we need to label the foam because once these pieces you know fly all over the place like it just happened um we need to know what edges go where so yeah my first couple pieces i did by hand i was like oh i'll just mark them later and then three pieces in i'm like wait are these looks right? Where are the things? I'm like, nope, let me do this right now. Make us big for a second. Well, that's Archer talking. Top left of our. Uh, oh, okay. Go there. Okay. There we go. So, this is the pattern uh, that, that she's using. Um, and that's kind of like the guide. It has all the pieces lined up. Now it is from this diagram is clearly the left side. So what I'm going to do is just label these L L. Do you guys have a, a stand for your helmet, like uh, in the picture there? No, that would be amazing. I would love to. I know they they recommend it. The uh, the guy that I was watching a video that I downloaded my templates from. He actually offered a template for foam to make your own uh, face, uh, you know, holder for, for helmets and stuff, you know? That's cool. Did you make so it? So if you got it, it's on a YouTube thing. I'll send you guys the link. I'm, I'm sure you guys could use that for potential builds in the future, too. Yeah, that'd be cool. Yeah. I have some mannequin heads, but... 
Yeah, that's basically what it is, except he, the same patterns you have here in front of you, he made it to make a mannequin head with the reference points and everything. So that's that's basically what he does. That's pretty cool. So we basically repeat that for every piece. We make sure we label everything. Um, and I'm not sure if you can see it, but some of these have dotted lines. Um, and they need to be beveled on an angle. So when you cut it, instead of going straight up and down, which you would on a normal edge, when you get to that dotted line, you cut under and you turn the blade. Oh, yeah. You got some bevels, too. I like that. So you're going to do those by hand, huh? Does it tell you a certain degree you have to do it or do you just bevel? Um, I think it's probably all 45 degrees. Uh, it'll say on the pattern somewhere. That's the one part I'm worried about is getting it because mine says a 40 degree bevel. And uh, yeah, it's kind of hard to judge a degree of an angle with just your hand. Right. It's tricky when you come to beveling, that's for sure. Um, these jaw pieces you may or may not use, right? Because you're doing a certain mask, you're probably not going to need the jaw pieces. But I mean, they're there if we need them. So. Let me... So that's a big piece of paper. What did you guys do? Uh, go to like Kinko's or something and print that out? Or you got a big printer? No, I just printed it out. So when you get, you can see it's um, taped together. Tape together. Oh, okay, okay. When you go into Adobe Photoshop and you print, you can choose poster size size of paper and you make it poster size um and gotcha. it'll show in the preview the print preview it'll show you um how many pages it is yeah see i was lucky all mine were scaled scaled to uh to, to size from the get-go so i just had to print them out on one piece of paper and then i was good to go right See, that looks awesome, man. I can't wait to see that. And then when you start painting it gold. Oh, right. Yeah, the, the paint's where it really, you know, starts to start looking like the character. This was Kachun using all of the ink from our printer. <laughs> Couldn't have just done it in black and white, could you? If I had have known, yeah, I would have used black and white. I've done that plenty of times before. Where you print it out, and next thing you know... You have to go buy some more blue or something, and you're like, oh, shit, I could have just done it in black and white. There goes the yellow. That's the problem when you um, print out reference pictures. See, and something like, you know, his amulet or, like, Dr. Strange's amulet, um, you can just use a reference picture, print it to the size that you want an actual size of the amulet, and then just you know, trace around all the intricate pieces and and make a, a separate template like this for each piece of the amulet. So then you can make, um, you know, different pieces of foam for the different pieces of the amulet and then just stick them together. Yeah, I was telling you a, lot, a while back, but last time I saw Dr. Fate, I was watching uh, Young Justice. Have you guys watched that one? No. It's actually not. a good cartoon. It was a nice, uh, you know, a little bit older than, uh, shit, what's it called? Brain fart. You know, uh, Robin and uh, all the sidekicks. What are they called? The Justice League? Yeah, but the, the kids, all the kids. Oh, young uh, Teen Titans. Teen Titans. There you go. Thank you. Uh, instead, they're just like a little older now. They're more uh, like late teens, early twenties. So it's called Young Justice, and Zatanna's dad is uh, Doctor Fate. Now he wears the helmet, and he's in some other dimension, and uh, she gets to see him once a year for an hour. Oh wow, that sounds horrible. Yeah, but the animation's really well done, and they they just did a new season of it this past year, 2019. Uh, but yeah, I, I highly recommend it, especially if you're a DC fan. 
Yeah, more of a Marvel fan, but I don't mind some DC. Doctor Fate and Demon are my two main DC. Characters. Yeah, I love Etrigar, man. I wish I didn't sell my number one and number three. <laughs> oh, you had the, the from the original series. Yeah, the Kirby series. Yeah, I had number one first appearance of Etrigan and uh, what's the Witch Boy, the one with the cat. Yeah, Witch Boy. Um, yeah, I bought the whole run back in the early nineties. I think for like forty bucks. He's just always a character that I didn't read, but every time I saw him on a cartoon or something, I'm like, this guy Demon is awesome. Like, why aren't people like? Why isn't he more popular? So then when I got back into collecting, I saw the book, and I'm like, geez, I can get this for 20 bucks? Okay. So this piece I'm going to leave, uh, and I'll cut it out later. Um, Is that the faux hawk? Yeah, that's the faux hawk, and it may end up being slightly different based on how this turns out, and I may have to freehand the shape of that. How, uh, how wide or thick are you thinking you're going to make that? It'll probably be the thickness of that gray foam. Just that, probably yeah. Millimeters. Well, I didn't know if it would be double if you're going to do like mirror images, a left and a right. So it would be like actually maybe like 20 millimeters thick. No, I'm just going to cut one because that gray foam is smooth on both sides. Oh, you're lucky, man. I got the one with the, the traction on it for <laughs> the, the pads to step on. <laughs> right. Well, this um, floor mat foam that we use it's uh, uh okay. texture, but it has that um it's yeah a yours really is a little bit open. uh tighter together than mine mine yeah, actually looks like the, the stuff on the back of a, a truck bed hey john people use this texture in their cosplay um the i've seen guys that that make um What's that game? Halo. Yeah. They Halo suits of armor, and they use this other side of the floor mat texture for, you know, quite a few pieces in there. You know, and that's why, as, as far as texture, that's why I didn't mess with a lot of the, the pads from being just on the ground and, and stepping on them and using them around my shop. They have little in, indents and in, in, divots cut out of them so i'm thinking you know if they're in a bad spot i'll smooth them out and, and fill them in when i before i start sealing and painting and yeah. if not then it's going to add some texture to it like battle damage hey john john's just hanging out so you can see i i um this was the eye because this was from the side i i knew that when <laughs> yes <out> poor mike <laughs> Free smells <laughs> next episode. G said earlier. <laughs> um, I enlarged the eye a little. I made it larger because this is from a side view. Uh, when you look at the eye straight on, it's actually going to be bigger than that. So I just kind of freehand it around it. I think I'm going to have to do mine too because with the Mando helmet, it's a very thin like T-shape for your visor and down the front. So I was thinking about making it a little bigger also so I can it won't restrict my vision around the yeah. con. So this is my left side of my Dr. Fate. Uh, I'm going to heat form it. When I cut it out, I'll put it on foam and then cut that out and then heat form it so it's kind of half spherical and then join it. What, do you, uh, what do you use to, to do that? Do you have like an anvil or like a mushroom? I'd to, like to, to get an anvil and I'm going to ask. Um, there's a really cool cosplayer that, that writes books on this stuff uh, and he has a cool anvil. So I'm going to ask him where he got his. Um, so you can use that to kind of, I use rocks that help <laughs> push it from the back. And what you know, I've seen uh, and I've seen both versions, you take a roll of tape and put a baseball or a tennis ball inside of it. And then you yep. heat up your pieces and roll them over that. I think the baseball might work better than the tennis ball. But, I uh, tennis ball, yeah, it was a bit soft. So I used but, rocks. I found some nice round river rocks and used those. Okay. Yeah, see, we don't have that around here. We just have coral rocks. What was that? What? I asked John what he was making for dinner. Oh, yeah, we still need to have dinner. 
I had some meatloaf and mashed potatoes. Ooh, that's good. Did you make it? Yeah, it was actually really good. Sometimes you want some home cooking like that, something that sticks to your ribs. That is definitely rib sticking, rib sticking uh, food for sure. <laughs> yep. Yeah. So there's a lot of pieces involved, and you need to keep track of everything. We usually keep things in a, a box separate, put the scraps in the box. Um, so I guess yeah, we I should... I'm going to try to cut out the rest of my stuff before our next show and mm -hmm. um, cut out all of the um, foam pieces, so all of these pieces as well, and get those labeled, and I guess try to assemble all of this. Yeah, I think what we'll do is maybe try and do a... A video, we'll, we'll just video it and then maybe time lapse it so that for cutting out or assembling for cutting out, uh, and then next week we're gonna we're gonna move into assembling these pieces. So we'll be probably somewhere where we can put a mask on and use the glue. Um, the garage in the garage. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna end up having to do that also because uh, the assembling part is just a little brush and some contact cement. So I'll probably be back at the the smoke shack for that. Yeah. So yeah, let's. Oh. Yeah, that's gonna be. So what about those points in the back? Is that gonna be something hard to to deal with? The back of the helmet? Yeah, see how it comes to a point back there, like a little pointy mullet almost? Yeah, no, that shouldn't be too bad. I'll actually probably dremel that once it's glued together mm -hmm. into kind of like a rounded point. We'll see how it looks. I, it may just end up being uh, like a 20 millimeter wide uh, and that that's kind of like what I was suggesting before, like that strip you have stand, laying over top of your your uh, Dr. Fate helmet right now. If you run that right down the middle to, and use that piece to connect your left hemisphere and your right hemisphere, it'll give you the width you need for your helmet, but then also give you a little bit of, a, a, I don't know, structure for that yeah. back pointed piece. You know what I mean? Yeah. It won't be so thin. It'll be more th thick and wide because you'll have the the center piece that connects your two helmet sides, your left side and then your right side also. But that's just me as like someone like talking to like the pro cosplayer. You know what I mean? I'm just spitballing with you. That's part of this show. You know, no, you're I mean? right. You're you know, engineering mind uh, definitely helps out because that does give structure and some strength to. But also with, because right now, as far as your helmet, you just have a, a left side and a right side. And, it, and if I'm trying to hold this up so you can see what I'm doing with my hands. But if you do that, it's just going to be like here. You don't have anything to like, you know what I mean? It's just going to stop here. You need it to get out and give you some space. So you might want to get that piece down the middle. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. <laughs> Thanks for the vote of confidence, Mr. P. <laughs> Pretender. <laughs> I, I first thought you said fake helmet. Dr. Fake. <laughs> Mr. Garrell, you keep you can be Dr. Strange and I'll be Dr. Fake. Yeah, definitely make a Dr. Strange. Yeah. Stay in your wasn't lane, he uh, wasn't he Garrell. Hulk? Uh, Hulk or something in a uh, Photoshop recently? Oh, yeah. It was. I he was multiple all of characters. Those. <laughs> there was one of those versions of Mr. G. There were about like six of them floating around. There was tons. There was Two. probably more than 15. And a lot of people were posting their own versions. It was amazing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, yeah you need cool. to do do like a mashup, Geralt, and uh, just throw it out. Throw like a fro pick in there and just be whatever character you want. I think that will be a great mashup. Yeah, John likes Doc Doctor Strange. He has a Doctor Strange cosplay. Doctor Strange is cool. Yeah. The cape is cool. Yeah. Yep, I actually rewatched that movie recently, and it's really good. I enjoy it, it a lot. Really it was a, I, I actually enjoyed it a lot more the second and third time watching it than the first the first time i was uh snobbish i was like jesus just inception you know what i mean i don't need this inception crap with all the thing and then the second and third time i watched it i'm like this is this is good i, I like it 
Yeah, I think it's I think it's really good, especially for like a comic series movie. I think they did a really good job. Doctor By the way, I rewatched all, all the crappy, or I'm not saying Doctor Strange, but all the crappy Marvel movies. Uh, Captain Marvel is still at the back of the bunch, but Iron Man two and three have kicked up a few notches in my book. They are actually decent flicks. They're not better than all the other movies, but they're better than what people anticipate or, or think they are. Yeah, a lot of the sequels weren't as good. It's hard though. I mean, it's hard when. Something new comes out and it's really good to make sequels that are going to be better than the original, you know? Right. Oh, yeah. There was a, a poll or something on Facebook and someone was like, what's the best origin movie? And for me, and it showed all these things. And one person was like, Captain Marvel. I'm like, geez, no, no, no. <laughs> There's really no wrong answer. But I was just, you know, joking with this person. I'm like, nope, you're wrong. Sorry. But really, uh, it's between... Iron Man 1, the rewatchability on that, and just an orange uh, orange <laughs> origin story is just yeah. phenomenal. Him or Captain America. I believe Captain America is a great, but I, I'm a little biased. I love like World War II flicks in movies and TV and stuff like that. Yeah. Well, apparently Mr. G is going to be a Transformer, so... <laughs> What's up, man? Start getting that pattern and start building an Optimus Prime mask. <laughs> you need a lot of foam, Dr. Carroll. Mr. Garrel. Dr. Garrel. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's a pseudo name. Yeah. Well, that was a good little insight into, you know, how we transfer our patents to foam. Mm -hmm. um, we're going to be doing more of that this week. Uh, so we're set up to put the pieces of foam together next week. And you know, create. But it'll start actually looking like a helmet. Mm -hmm. for all then we of get us. to the fun part, which is painting and adding, yeah. you know, different um, details on it. With um, there's like moldable foam that you can use and add clay. on. Well, there's moldable foam, oh, like foam yeah. as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but because it's lighter than clay. Right. Yep. So. Yeah, I can't wait for that. I, I kind of uh, excel a little bit at painting, so I'm looking to add the details in the, yeah. like the varnish, okay. not varnish, but like the wear and tear to it, you know what I mean? The distressing to the yeah. helmet itself. I enjoy that stuff because literally, like, I'm a cabinet maker, so I like to do stuff that's literally outside of the box because I like using my talents for other things than just making cabinets. Right. No, that totally makes sense. I, I, I enjoy that too. I mean, I definitely like the artistic part of it. Um, you know, the ide ideation of it, um, mm -hmm. you know, some of the cutting out patterns and transferring to foam isn't extremely exciting. But I can do that. <laughs> but it, it's a necessary process and, and it, it takes it. a little while. Yeah. It, it's just yep. more, it's more just the, the time consuming part. And sometimes it's hard to envision it like coming together when you're doing all of these bits and pieces. Um, but the closer you get, you know, to, you know, a final product, you're like, Holy shit, this is starting to look really amazing. Yeah. Yeah. One of my friends was like, why don't you just buy one? I'm like, well, that's like anywhere from 60 to like 150 bucks if you want a good one. So I right. have the talent, you know, I have the machines and tool, you know, why not just give it a shot and try to make one, you know? Well, and to be perfectly honest, you know, I purchased, um, it was a Spider-Man shell for you, um, and it was 3D printed off Etsy and it was supposed to fit his head and the sizing was not great. And just the edging, like the way it was cut, it was so sloppy. Like it honestly was pretty unusable the eye holes didn't match up so i feel like it's best just to make it yourself because then you know you you know you can tweak it it may not be absolutely you know perfect but at least it's going to fit your face and you can work with it yeah i'm, I'm fingers crossed i'm hoping this fits my face it says that it fits a certain size head like 26 <laughs> inches or 29 inches i haven't measured my head but hopefully it works out good yeah. But I but I agree. You take a sense of pride in like the work that you do and a sense of a, accomplishment when you're done and you see that finished product of, of something you're working on and and you're just proud of it. You're proud of the work and time you put in, into the project. Yeah. 
definitely. And I'm just using floor mats because I'm kind of taking a, a risk with just using a picture. But yeah, that's kind of be going to be a prototype, and it's it's cheaper foam, the floor mats over the high density. Hey, foam. same here. I actually swung by Kmart to see about buying another pack because they were like twenty bucks for like a pack of ten or something. And uh, our, our Kmart down here is going out of business, so they didn't have oh, anything. Wow. I was like, "Oh, great! Now I'm going to have to 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 make sure this really works out great <laughs> out of my floor so mats from my shop." You usually get like five or six in a pack, and that's good for probably an entire armor of a Mandalorian. Mm -hmm. Okay, five or oh, you're right. Yeah, okay, you're right. You're right. I was wrong on the ten, but it's still it's relatively cheap for the pack, you know. John's eating messy food. <laughs> what, what did he say? I can't. There we go. Burgers. Burgers. And he loves Dr. Burgers. Street. Oh, yeah. Thor Dark World, that's number two, right? Is the worst MCU film, in his opinion. I don't mind the Thor films. But I think they're fun. I watched it, John, and it, I rewatched it again, and I used to to I used to agree with you. Like the for me, the the three worst films were uh, Captain Marvel, Iron Man three, and Thor: Dark World. Thor number two is okay, man. It's not great. I'm not trying to like church it up, but it's it's a good flick. It's it's not as bad as we we originally thought. Like I said, I watched all the rewatched all the crappy intentionally. I'm like, no, oh, these are all the crappy Marvel movies. I've already watched Endgame ten times. Let's see what these look like again. And I, I was the, surprised it wasn't that bad. The Cap, the Cap films, and the Guardians films are the only really ones that the sequels are are as great. Are phenomenal. Yeah, yeah. Winter Soldier is phenomenal. I liked all the Deadpool films. <laughs> yeah. Are they the MCU? I, no, but I mean, it's still there in the co We're talking about comic films, and so I'm just going to throw it out there that I liked all of the Deadpool films. I just wish they didn't kill uh, kill off his girlfriend in part two. And, you know, oh, yeah, there was, that was rumors that she was going to end up being that she was actually Lady Death, you know, hint, hint to your uh, cosplay that you're doing. Mm, wow. Interesting. Because there's a whole thing, uh, love triangle between Deadpool, Thanos, and Lady Death. Oh, yeah, yeah, I was reading that. Dave and I were talking about that the other That's day. True. Yeah, Mike, building things is pretty cool. Stress relieving. Definitely. But the painting part, when you're hand painting and using brushes, that can be very stress relieving. Yeah. I'd offer to spray your helmet, but if I mess up, I'd feel really bad. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Girl, he doesn't agree. With what? with John's opinion. About what? Thor 2. Oh, the about Dark Thor. World being the word. Um, They're all better than 90% of the action films, yeah. Mm -hmm. Exactly, John. It, it's like bad pizza. You know, bad pizza is still better than the half the stuff in the freezer. <laughs> he said he remembers those not being good. Yeah, that's what Bake said. <laughs> they weren't, they weren't, Gerald, for real. Number three pissed me off because of the whole... I don't know what you want to call it, but like Gwyneth Paltrow getting superpowers and the the 57 Iron Man suits at the end, you know, it was just a big cluster, you know. He had to show off all lot. his, uh, you know, all the little iterations that he, he made through the comics. Mm. Well, they had the whole damn movie, he didn't have his armor on, so they had to show you all the armor at the end, <laughs> end of it. With Mr. Garrel saying he's going to make a Transformer, I think the Transformer movies are all worse than any MCU movie. Like, I speaking I of which, season, but then after that, they were all terrible. Whose show was I? I wasn't on. I was in the chat telling them about it. Uh, there is a new Transformers on Netflix. It's a computer animated, and it is better than any Transformers movie since the first Transformers movie or animation has come out. Not Generation 1 and all those old ones when, when we were kids, but from when the new movie came out, this is probably the best Transformer story I've ever watched. I Can't wait for the next two chapters to come out. It's set before they come to Earth, right? Yeah, it's right before they come to Earth. It, it's a nice mixture of Generation 1 Transformers with a couple of new ones. I don't want to spoil anything, but there's a... 
a collabo. Yeah, there's a collabo of one of those guys that uh, have to do with sound. Oh, okay. If you know what I'm talking about, are you a Transformers guy? Ah, screw it. Sound Blaster, bro. Sound Blaster makes an appearance. Sound That's Blaster awesome. is basically Soundwave and uh, what's his name, and they put them together to make a, a new a new guy. Well, but I, I highly recommend that train. We're getting off topic, but I highly recommend that Transformers new Transformers TV show on Netflix. It is really, really good. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, on that note, we should probably wrap up because I think Rod and, and Jeffrey are on. Have to go. Oh, yeah. And we went over a little bit of an hour. Uh, not too shabby. Yeah. Yeah, it was fun. Thanks for joining us, Bake. It was great to see your machine. <laughs> That's what yeah, she's always a blast. Can't wait till next week when we start gluing everything together. Hey, perfect yeah. timing. My battery's about to die. Oh, All right. perfect. <laughs> All right, stay safe. Uh, get ready for those hurricanes. <laughs> Everyone's going to be buckling. Yeah, down we got a record-breaking uh, hurricane. Uh, first time in history that two hurricanes are at the same time in the Gulf of Mexico. Gulf of Mexico. So, uh, yeah. yeah, they're still we'll category right. ones, but fingers crossed everything works out okay. Definitely we'll stay safe. That, that, that movie where they combine and make a category six storm. Sharknado? Sharknado. <laughs> <laughs> Possibly. Who knows? But yeah, have you got, uh, have you got anything else coming up or will we see? No, you man, just been taking a break. Uh, and it just been taking a break on the live streams and just doing the doing the show with you guys. So I uh, can't wait till next week till we start getting free smells and gluing everything together. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Well, we I think we'll probably be opening an AOK -okay tomorrow, so that'll be on. Yeah, I heard someone sent you an AOK. -okay. A torpedo. Apparently. Comic books NYC. Yay! Yay! Uh, I sent him an a uh, AOK -okay the other day. And uh, we got a we got a like from Brian K. Vaughn himself. Wow! So that's cool. That's cool. I sent him a, I sent him a little one issues one through four of uh, a Brian K. Vaughn run. You know, because NYC likes his BKV. Yeah, Very yeah. cool. That sounds awesome. Did he open it up yet? Yeah, he posted it on Instagram. It had some food in it, so <laughs> he had to open it up fairly quick. <laughs> awesome. Cool. All Very right. Cool. Thanks again, Bake. Yeah, Bake it was great. Yeah, thank you. Always a pleasure. Thanks everyone for tuning in, and can't wait till next week. Mike, yeah, we're one off two hundred. Hopefully, we'll hit that one more. Yep. One more. <laughs> <laughs> Bye, guys. Thanks, guys. Thanks for everyone in the chat. Bye, everybody. Everyone in the rewind. Bye, guys. <laughs>